Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and it's part two of the needle felted peacock butterfly using the technique of uh, water soluble paper to get a nice thin finish and then to make use of the um, rinsed out water soluble paper starch um, to get it um, to have a sort of a nice stiff um, finish of it so it makes a nice um, nice fabric and you can see it is really it is really sort of like it's not floppy it's not very the, the the finish is not very thick either so we're not needle felting and needle felting we're using the water soluble paper to create the base and if you've missed part one then do pop over um onto um on our channel on onto part one basically stay where you are but uh, go onto a different video which um obviously all of these live streams they stay on there as a video that you can rewatch. ignore all the comments and all the chit chat that might happen in the here and now with um our lovely supporters and viewers uh joining us live on the actual day and today is um I want to say what date it is today. I can never remember. Okay, Thursday is the first. So Wednesday must be... So today is the 29th. 29th of June, 2021. Would you believe it that we're already over halfway into 2021? I can just see that there's a little uh, naughty um, dragonfly fairy showing off um, her um, skirt underneath. Dragonfly fairy uh, will be revealed on uh, Thursday this week, which is the 1st of July. And um, that's part of our subscription boxes. But I thought she can have a little appearance and just say hello while you're waiting here. It goes nicely with the butterflies and all the sort of delicate type of things. Let's have a look who's here today. Um, we have got Ashley is there and Jane. Um, and Emma, of course, is there uh, to support as the makers. Ava is there. Diane. Um, yeah, we haven't seen you for a while, Diane. Vampire Venom is there. Jane is there. Catherine. Ashley. Um, Meg. Serena, Sandra, Michael, Diana, and Heather, and Marion. Perfect. Good start. Let's um let's kick this off. Um, if you've watched last time, you will have seen that I got as far as that. So um the the bottom wings have been finished, and then I started on um the the top of um, the, the top wings and um, I suggested to you that you could if you wanted to finish the top wings by colouring them in in brown but um, if not then that's not a big deal because we can do it together. So uh, just to remind you these these this all of this came out of our uh, peacock butterfly kit which makes two and um, I've got I've split it so that I've got one half of the uh, butterfly of all the materials um, so I can make a second one that's what um, it's best to do keep everything for the second one on um, away from the first one so you don't um, dip into it and this is the the butterfly kit if you uh, want to get that one that's available on our website it's also one that appears in our making um, needle felted animals book which is here and that leads me on to explaining to you today what you can win so remember on, it, during the live streams whether it is on youtube or whether it's the live stream the repeat on thursdays um, on facebook at 7 p.m uk time you can win yourself a prize and today you can win yourself the making needle felted animals book which uh, we would like you to say or to tell us, if you were a butterfly yourself, what stage of the life cycle are you at today? So let us know, where are you at today? Are you already this beautiful, um, unfolded, newly um, newly born butterfly? Or are you in some more of the infant stages? So as always, put this into the pop this into the comments. We will draw the winner during the live stream. So today will be for the Tuesday watches um that i'm i'm saying out loud i can't look into the future therefore i can't say anything about the thursday ones but i was telling you the butterfly is in there and it is indeed um so it's been around for some time and that's uh, that is because it's been a very successful um design which sophie designed originally and so she gave me the idea to to use water soluble paper to uh, needle felt butterflies um, so there you go. That's the the size here. It's the template that is the size exactly the size that we're making here, and you can win yourself the signed copy of a book um, that has got um, both our signatures in Sophie and Steffi. And um, just tell us 
what stage of the butterfly um, transformation are you in today? And um, pop it in the comments. Emma will draw a winner. And then on Thursday, Hannah will draw a winner. And it's at complete random. So we don't go by what answer we like particularly or didn't like or whatever. We just we just put, put you in the pot and pick a winner out of there. So let's have a look at the overhead camera just to give you... Um, so this is how far we've got with the butterfly. Um, I have been using the mat that comes in the butterfly kit, which is slightly bigger. It is our eco wool mat. It's actually quite interesting that um, it's now sort of felted together. I can still force it apart. You can see where I've been felting. So if you need to clean that off, you can sort of pick the fibers out. This mat is not meant to last as long as our um, earth mat, which you can see just underneath here. This one is actually a really big one. It's the A3. And of course, the earth mat should last you forever and ever and ever. And if you need to replace it, you're probably very likely just to have to replace the top layer, which is the 100% wool layer. The base part is 70% wool and 30% man-made fiber. It's slightly stiffer. So you have that um, that way around. People also use it the other way around, whatever takes your fancy. And I'm following the instructions religiously. So I am um, continuing here on this case, how to, um, to, to fill in the top part of that wing, having done this side last time. And just to remind you, or if you've not seen this before, we are actually laying the wool down so that it overshoots the, um, the, the outside of the wing, um, because we just want to stab it in. So you can just about see the line through the wool. And when you've done that, then you fold over the, um, the fibers from the outside and you make it fit inside that drawn line. And um, the drawn line was created by um, laying the water soluble paper over the template and then just using a pencil and trace around the line on the outside. And that's all there is to it to uh, get this shape onto your water soluble paper. There are, of, of course, details on that particular um, drawn out template that you've copied over, but we're filling it completely in. So don't worry about, um, about that. Felting flat always means you have to lift it off the mat. So do that. And I'm just trying to make sure, as I've been telling you last time, and I'll try to do the same as well, try and keep your um, your make really, really symmetrical. So do do copy one side exactly how you've done the other side, even even if it's slightly different from from the instructions, because you know you're not doing it in exactly millimeter by millimeter the same way. But try and keep your butterfly equal from one side to the other. And also, if you remember, we did use a special help. If you've got a three needle felting tool, the slightly more economical version, the blue one, then you can use that too. It just speeds things up. If you have got a um, any of the other multi tools, which um, um, is the, the blue seven needle felting tool, you can use that too. It, um, it works on the mat, but not as satisfyingly as it works on the brush mat. So if you want to invest in that, then get both the brush mat and the seven needle felting tool. And um, if you don't want um, to worry about the brush mat, then spend a little bit more on your clover five needle tool, which does work on the um, the either the um, earth mat or the eco wool mat as well. Just show you that. There you go. It works just as well. So you can use it on either and it just speeds up your work and it makes it uh, quite smooth, gives it a smooth finish as well. When you make the butterfly, you have to remember that the water soluble paper will disappear as a background at some point. So you do need to build up a certain density. If you hold it up against the light and it look you have a you can see through it, then you do need to build up a little bit more wool. Um, I'm not so worried about these parts here because in effect they will be covered in in other colors, uh, but I'm more worried about the two wings meeting each other um, because you not I'm not worried about it right now, but I will be later because once the water disappears and you have made a really strong line here, then um, obviously that will um, become a hole. So you do need to keep these connected. I will, however, just make sure that I'm going a little bit more into the corner there. What you might find is you felt the wool down and then it sort of pulls away from the edges as you're felting it down in the center. 
so you can um, you can always add a little bit more wool and go over the edges again this brown edge will stay so we are <clears throat> adding wool over the top but the brown edge will be visible so you do need to keep that nice and neat because that um, sort of frames the butterfly if you like and um, I'll just let you catch up in case you have to do both of the wings still and um, tell you a little bit more what's happening with us this week and the next four weeks probably as well so um, that's how far I've got with the butterfly now and um, I'll let you do a bit of catching up if you're felting along. You might have spotted the sweet treats um, in my background here. And one of them is, um, and this is this is unprecedented, okay? I am showing you now um, the wool and the colors that as they appear, including the cone in the, in the surprise box that is still available for the next two days. You've got until um, today and tomorrow to get your hands on this ice cream surprise box. This is only, I would say, maybe a quarter of the wool that you actually get inside the box. And um, I'm not going to go into details what it is, but you can see these are really lovely, lush ice cream colors. And um, it even works in a Sunday. You don't get that cup. Um, this is this is actually one that was used before. Um, you can um, you can this is you don't have to make these things up. But this is uh, what the ice cream box colors look like. And I've seen some amazing makes over on Every Wanna Maker, which of course you are very welcome to join. Just ask you to um, answer three questions, and then you can uh, see what other people are making from their sub uh, subscription boxes or from our kits or any of our products and materials. And we always is there to help you as well 24 7 as soon as we pop our eyes open we usually check what's happening over on that group as well so this is just um, a very very naughty I'm probably gonna get get the sack now a very naughty um, insight into our surprise box and if you haven't had yours yet and I've just spoiled your surprise I do apologize 100,000 times but um, anyway I'm gonna have an ice cream now <laughs> Smells delicious, very sheepy. Anyway, you can still get this until um, tomorrow. And um, the other thing that you might have spotted is the is the Dartmoor Pony. That's of course also part of our um, um, makers box. You can make design your own pony. It could be something as light and as um, uh, flecked as that. Or what's the other one? Oh, no. Naughty pony, oh, it's down here. Or you can make a more traditional color like the brown. Oh dear, oh dear, everything's collapsing. Um, the brown one, there is enough wool in your uh, maker's box to make a, a um, to design your own. So you might end up with lots of brown left over, lots of white left over, lots of the ginger color left over, but at least you've got the choice to make. Um, one or the other. It makes one pony, even though you will have lots of wool left over. Oh, and I think it was the naughty ice ice cream that collapsed potentially. Everything's fallen down. Um, so just putting that back there now. Mermaid overboard. Oh dear. Uh, talk about the mermaids in a minute. There she is. Put her back up. This one. There, there too. One's, one's kissing the table at the moment. The other one was on the floor. Right, so that, that is the last chance to get your hands on our subscription boxes. The one that I haven't told you about is the Water Fairy. I keep forgetting to bring her back um, into the studio here. So I think um, you're just gonna have to have a look on our website, but the Water Fairy, beautiful colors, a dark blue dress and um, amazing, well, actually it's got, she's got hair of the dress of the, of the um, mermaid and um, lots of beautiful sort of, um, teardrop type decorations as well and she's got rummy hair which will be our fiber of the month next month just to give you a bit of a heads up what's happening there so I um, love the rummy for this floaty floaty white hair um right let's go back to our butterfly there we go as I'm uh, rigorously sticking to the instructions, I'm now getting my colors ready to color in the top wings. And in the instructions, it does tell you mix together a pinch of red and a pinch of yellow um, wool top. So uh, red and yellow. Now it is definitely this yellow. So these two, when you mix them together, I'll just remind you how you're mixing wool as well. I'm just already tearing them apart so that they have one or the other color in there. You mix them together by having the tops 
on top of each other and then pulling them or teasing them apart. So you're not actually severing the fibers. You're just letting the fibers slither away from each other and you're mixing it so that you get a nice, even, new color mix. And this will turn out orange. If you feel that it's too red or too yellow, then just add a little bit more of one or the other color into it and keep mixing it, always making sure that you're going in the same direction because we do want to maintain that um, the way that the fiber runs to color in the top of the, of the wings. So I think that's quite a satisfying color. I don't know why to keep turning it around. Don't have to do that, but I am. And then what you're going to do is you're um, leaving a dark brown outer border as you did as you did before with the with the bottom wings. You're only leaving the, the outer darker border here as well. And then you lay the mixed orange fibers onto the top wings one at a time. So you can actually what you can do is you can sort of um, lay them out by teasing them out and making them a little bit more so you have a bit more control of where they're going rather than plonking the whole lot on there. That's what I'm trying to say. There we go. And then, uh, as before, you um, you felt these down so that you um, have a brown wing frame here on the side. So you have to fold them in as well. There we go. Put this down. You don't have to worry about the top of the brown that can just become one I felt these down you've got lots of um, uh, wool left so if you do need to make more then just don't don't skimp don't don't have um, too much brown showing through just lay it over there so you've got a nice cover sorry if, if my head keeps popping into the camera <laughs> I did that last time. I know what I need to do is I just need to put the instruction closer to me so I don't have to look beyond my work. Apologies. I felt this down. And I think I might just mix a little bit more so that I have enough to cover that side of the wing too. But to lift it off your mat, you can see how this sort of starts sticking to it. And um, so you do want to lift that off make that outer line on the wing and then flop the fibers over so that they come inside that shape leaving just a brown edge on the tip of the wings but don't worry about the top of the wings and felt that down so if you had a, um, a fast fast tool like the five needle felting tool you could speed that up now that the wool is in place and I'm just going to mix a little bit more to come um, to, to cover that bottom part of the top wing. Here we go. And the top part of the butterfly, all of all of that orange that we've covered here will actually be covered with um, with a lighter yellow wool top. So even if, if it's not too, um, too thick a cover, I'm not too worried about it because I know something else is going to happen there. So I'm just going to make a little bit more to fit onto there. Just have a little bit of red here, a little bit of yellow, and get the same or a similar mix as I have done already. So just keep tear not tearing it so much as in making it shorter, but more as in uh, letting the fiber slither away from each other, and that definitely needs a bit more yellow in there, so I'm adding that in. If you had to do um, two um, or three attempts to mix it, that's absolutely fine. If you did it all in one, then well done. Um, there's no right or wrong. You can just take your time and do it as you need to do it. That's it. And then, I don't think I need all of that. Take as much as you need and cover the last bit here. I start out with my single needle again. I'm still using my coarse needle and then I'm um, making the edge here and then fold the fibers over so I can have that little bit of brown frame peeping out. Right, if you're um, felting along with me, I'll let you catch up again and I'll just show you what I've done in the big on the big screen now as well. There you go. 
that's how far we've got now. So it, it is actually really nice having the fibers a little bit mottled because it gives more of a natural look. As you imagine, the butterfly cover is more like a dust. Well, it is actually dust. So it, it's, it's sort of naturally the pigments mixed together. So it's not a straight, solid color. And um, mixing the wool in that way makes it, um, a, gives it a really good effect. Um, we've got oh, so much going on. I could be tell, talk, just sitting here all day talking about it, but I don't obviously want to fill the space. I have got, um, just with that, I have got a couple of questions that um, we would like you to ask. And this is not just the Tuesday live stream gang. This is also the Thursday live stream gang. What we would really love for you to tell us in the comments here and um, on Thursday on Facebook is um, what do you get out of watching this live? Just just, you know, remind us again. We think we know, but just give us an idea what you get out of watching this live. And there may be very different answers from the Tuesday to the Thursday um, followers. Um, but do let us know, what what is it? Why do you watch us live on a on a Tuesday or on a Thursday? What is it that, um, that you get from doing this? And I know there's always a price to be won, but other than that, or maybe it's just that, that's, that we're not judging it. We just want to know what is it that you... Um, that you benefit from by watching us on a, on a Tuesday live and on a Thursday live. Um, that would be amazing. Do tell us. And um, let's have a look what, um, what people are, um, what stage of the butterfly they're in. That might be quite funny to hear. Um, Sandra says she's back from her holidays. Lucky you. Nice. Um, get to that point. Uh, <laughs> you you guys, you really want to make a pheasant, don't you? There's a quest question there, if they could uh, possibly ad adapt the chicken in the book to a pheasant. Well, I'm sure you could. Um, it's only a small chicken. It's only that big. So if you wanted to make a small... Um, yes, I'm, I'm building myself up to the pheasant, okay? Um, I'm waiting for a warm, sunny day. So I'm waiting inside for my maiden flight. Oh, um Diana says, in reality, I'm probably a butterfly with rather worn out wings, but I'd like to feel like a chrysalis, chrysalis about to emerge into a new productive life. Oh, oh, that's kind of sad because then you wouldn't be that butterfly anymore. No, just stay the butterfly with old wings. We don't mind. Um, I would definitely be an adult butterfly. Beautiful creatures, says Samantha. Um, Marion says, at 73, I'm a really mature butterfly reaching the end of my life, but still living my life for, to the full. Well done. And also I think with butterflies, it's, it's more like, um, you don't have to be literally an old or young butterfly. It's more about, um, metaphorically speaking. So, you know, you could be that butterfly, that beautiful, just, um, do you say hatched? I don't know if it's hatched, butterfly, um, emerged butterfly for all your life because that's how you feel. It's about how you feel. It's not, we don't want to know how many wrinkles you've got and how old your wings are. That's quite all right. It's how you feel. Um, if I were a butterfly, says Beth, I would just, I, I would just emerge my co cocoon and looking at the wonders around me, see my new butterfly friends. Oh, <laughs> And Eva says, if I were a butterfly today, my wings would be quite thinly worn and not very colourful. Oh, no, we do need to put a bit of colour in your butterflies again, Eva. Tell us what we need to do. Tell us. We tell you a joke or I don't know. What what little bit of um, love and care do you need today? Uh, Laura says, hi, everyone. If I was a butterfly, my wings would be waterlogged and I'd be struggling to take flight towards the end of life. Just got drenched in a sudden downpour. Oh dear, I know. Well, um, well, we'll help you dry out your wings. How about that? We'll blow very hard and dry them out for you. Catherine says, if I was a butterfly, I would have a damaged wing as my shoulder is playing up today. Oh dear. Oh, well, it will get better. Um, Michael says, would have to be um, a chrysal chrysalis dreaming of the life ahead. Oh, nice. Um, oh, Ashley says, oh, fire fairy hair. Hmm. Hey, maybe I've missed something here. Fire fairy hair. Fire, fire. Oh, maybe the mix of the butterflies. Um, 
so Diana says, maybe I would be a caterpillar so I could spend all day eating. Yeah, that would be me too. We could be two uh, fat, roly poly uh, caterpillars. <laughs> Um, Diane um, also says, if I was a butterfly, I would visit all the wildflowers, enjoy the colours of the scent and the scents. Um, Ashley says, my butterfly is happy and enjoying the lovely lavender. Oh, and Ashley says, Thursdays cheers me up. So, Ashley, you watch Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's so nice. Um, oh, and Sandra says, I get inspiration and a giggle and spending time with friends. Um, oh, we have to read some of these um, in a minute. Um, so, um, right, let's get back to the butterflies. So, we have um, filled in the top part with that orange and now we're going to fill in the very, very top part with um, the lighter yellow, which is here, that cream yellow. Um, I think we actually call it cream. And then with a, with a yellow top. So, obviously, I'm not filling that in like that I've got to mix mix it first so as before probably a little bit less uh, wool to mix um, just uh, put them on top of the, each other again and then tease them apart as you have done before there you go and once you've done that then you're going to create it it will look a little bit stark in a minute but um, there is something else to it so you're going to lay these out again as you did before, making sure that you keep that bit of the brown frame visible so that it covers the top part of the wing, the very, very top part of the wing. And then use your felting needle, to fasten that in the middle so they don't jiggle about. There, You still need to show a little bit of that orange, a lower part of the wing. And then felt your imaginary outer line down again and then bend it over so you expose the frame, the brown frame, the very edge. And then you do the same on the other side and, and add more wool if, um, if you don't feel you've got enough there. Make sure that it's symmetrical. So I will definitely have to add a bit more of that lighter yellow mix. Lifting this off so it doesn't fasten on. Make sure you lift this off regularly. What can happen, you can actually tear the water soil paper if you don't lift it off regularly enough. And when you do lift it off, be gentle, like peel it off very, very gently so that um, you've got, again, less chance of, um, of pulling the whole thing um, apart and breaking it, we, that would be such a shame. Right, color that in, bend that over, and then felt it down. So you've got a mirror image from one side to the other. And you might find you have to go over it over some other parts on the other side again. <laughs> That's always the danger. And let the fibers run from side to side rather than from top to bottom. So that gives that sort of painted look that butterflies often have. Love my five, five needle clover tool. It's really great. Such a good investment, it really is. The quality is just so much better than um, the seven needle felting tool, though the seven needle felting tool has got its uses. So I don't want to uh, make you feel bad if you've got one and you think, oh, you wish you had the other one. It, it does have its uses too, but the five one is just a little bit more versatile because you can use it on any type of felting mat. Saying that I haven't actually used it on a full mat, so I wouldn't like to say that that it works on that, but we don't use them anymore because we love the environment. Don't want to put more plastic in there. Right, so that's what that looks like now. I have sort of, um, um, yes, yeah, so now we need to mix a little red, cream and yellow. So that light, what I called light yellow, is actually, um, is actually, we call it cream, even though it looks like a very pale yellow. 
So you're using, you're mixing um, the red, cream and yellow, all three of them basically. I've, I've still got a bit of my um, yellow and red mix left, so I'm just going to use that. And what you're going to do now is you're making a mix up that it can be the transition between those two. <clears throat> there we go. Well, Emma is just saying that she's you. She uses her um, five needle tool, and so do I actually on on three um, D stuff, which um, you definitely can't use that seven needle felting tool on it. The needles are too close together. That is the that is the problem, and there are seven needles, and they're really close together. Whereas with this one, you've got only five needles, and whilst there are fine needles, they're actually quite. In comparison to the, let's have a look and compare it. Comparison to the seven needle felting tool, they are a lot further they're um just further apart and um yeah so it just it just it also looks like the needles are slightly uh, more protruding that would also help but the needles are definitely more spread um around so there there are bigger gaps between the needles anyway what I was going to say is that we're mixing a wool that's not quite that color and not quite that color but something in between so if you if you and that is to make that transition a little bit smoother between the two. So whatever mix you have made there, and just add really thin wispy fibers onto it because we just want to um, capture that transition. I think I might just go straight for my five needle felting tool and get it down. There we are. So that's made that transition a little bit more um, soft, a bit softer. So this is the point where you might want to look, hold your uh, butterfly against the light and just have a look if there's any weak patches or if you've missed a bit of the frame or anything like that. If that is the case, then just um, use a little bit of, um, of use more wool and just um, add. I can note. I notice here that the tip of the wing is not quite reaching that line that I've put down. Um, that drawn line so I'm just going to stab a bit more in there I'm going to check my butterfly all around now yeah that looks pretty good yeah I'm quite happy with that so now um, we're going to continue coloring in the top wing because it's obviously got more in there than just that colorway I'm getting to the last page of the instructions now and um, we're adding a black spot to the top outer edge of the of the um, top wing, and that is um, literally just um, the way that I've been doing spots. Is rather than pre pre shaping them, I like put them down and then I just felt into the sh the black shape, the 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 outer outline of the shape that I wanted to be, and uh, it sort of magically does it. So you really want to work with very very small amounts of wool. We're not trying to make imagine a butterfly how delicate they are you don't want to put on a really thick black spot on there you just want it to be um sort of almost like it's same surface as everything else um so i'm just painting it with my needle i just go in the in the out on the outline and the wispy fibers on the um outside of my line that i'm stabbing they sort of just they want to come in as i'm stabbing and they're pulling in and um, so I've done that on both sides. Now you're going to um, felt three black stripes coming down from the top of each top wing, one outside the black spot and two inside. So where the brown edge is here, we're actually adding a bit more black and it's like a stripe coming down from the top of the wing. So um, you can, I don't know if you can see it so well in the camera, but you can definitely see it as I'm felting it, that it is, the, the, the black is different from the dark brown, even though it does look very similar. Um, so there's a stripe. Um, it's best to look at the image um, if you've got one um, in front of you, because it's it's more it's more of a wedge than a, a stripe by the looks of it. So we are sort of surrounding that black spot a little bit by curving that stripe, and so it's more wedge shape than round. And then what I do is, as I told you before, just once you've done one side, go and do the other side, because then um, 
you, you you sort of remember straight away what you've been trying to do but you have to do it obviously in mirror image which is always a little bit tricky and it will never be exactly the same but get it as symmetrical as you possibly can um, it will help the overall look some people are really good with this symmetry I'm actually not that good with that um, so I, I have to try extra hard to to do that to get the symmetry right that's often when you needle felt especially animals it's often the symmetry that um when you know when you think oh something's not quite right it's often the symmetry that that has um kind of um gotten in the way of it being perfect um and it's hard to see sometimes sometimes you have to take a photo of what you're doing to see it it's it's almost sort of um forcing your eye to look at it in a different way um, so that you can see again. <laughs> um, so copy that out on the other side. So it's 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 stripes, it says stripes in the instructions, but it's more like wedges, um, the, the, uh, cup, the other couple to, um, that you're putting in. And they're sort of slightly leaning towards the outer of the wing, so they're slightly curved. Yeah, that looks okay. And um, and then you're making this magic ma mix again, which I absolutely love. We already used that here, down here. It, it gives that really iridescent, nice look, and it's made from the fairy mix and the light blue. It's such a good mix. I absolutely love it. It's, it's been such a, a good, um, and I've actually got some mixed here. So this this these two make that when you mix it and has almost that iridescent look, that sort of shiny iridescent look, even though it's not shiny. It's just those two mixed together have that magical effect and you're putting this on the sort of the edges of the wing so that you can still see uh, the black but it's kind of slightly covered that cut that black spot is slightly covered so keep it nice and thin and um, just put that on the edges of of that wing and you still need to see the um, the brown frame so do fold it in a bit if you over spilling yeah and I just do the other one and then I let you catch up because then we are at a um, actually I, I do the next the next step as well before we get to the body so paint this on you need so little I mean you can see I've still got lots of wool left over if you're using everything on one butterfly it's it's kind of forgotten it's no longer a caterpillar and it's kept eating <laughs> It's one fat big butterfly. Um, I have got lots of wool left. You really, really don't need to use all of it. We're very generous with uh, the amounts of wool that are in there. Put that down and then make sure you lift your work off. There we go. So that um, has added these little tip tips there of the wing. And uh, let's have a look. So this is what it looks like now. So, uh, so much, it transforms so much with, um, we're not far off, um, got a few more details, but we're really, really not far off getting to that finished one. Um, so let's have a look what people are um, giving us feedback about um, what they get out of watching, but also um, what stage of the butterfly they're in. And I would say, um, this is sort of a message for Emma, when I start um, this when I start making the body of the butterfly, then maybe we should draw a winner. So that's for Emma and for Hannah. Um, so Beth says, "I'm very new to needle felting. It gives um, it gives me ideas, and I like that you are that you share your tips and techniques. Absolutely." Bridget says, "I find Tuesday Life keep me connected to creative friends, and I always enjoy Steffi's humor and her felting skill." Oh, thank you, Bridget. That's very kind. Betsy says, I would be in the chrysalis, chrysalis stage, tired and storing up my energy. Oh, that's back to the back to the stages. Chrysalis. It's called chrysalis. Sorry, I'm 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 I sometimes I don't get the the emphasis right. Um it's like I said before, I've been saying for years and years, um circumvents until somebody sort of looked at me. Most people knew what I was talking about, but um they looked at me, I said, it's circumvents. How do you spell that? So I spelled it out and I said, no, it's circumference. <laughs> How was I supposed to know this? So in, in Germany we say monopoly and in English you say monopoly. It's that it's the same thing. It's spelled in exactly the same way. It's just 
the emphasis the um is is somewhere else. So um it's a bit like with um Chris can't say, can't say it now again. Um that one. Um I love the con oh yeah that, that uh oh, no that's uh, Diana says I love the contact with other crafty folks. Steffi is always so enthusiastic and that enthusiasm is infectious. Oh thank you. Okay, I'm not going to read all these compliments. It's making me blush. Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I have got some other stuff that I want to, to share with you. So first of all, let's get all of this out of the way. Um, Advent calendars, they're there. They've been made live last week, Friday, and we have sold over what a half of our stock. I mean, it's getting very, very close to 75%. So if you want yours, do not hesitate. Get it. Um, it's there. It's not no longer um, um, just a myth that we're talking about. You can pre-order it now. What I will say is, and I really I'm begging you, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, is that um, please, please, please do not add anything else into that order. We had to change from previous years because we physically, logistically just can't cope with all these extra orders that get added into a pre-order because we just get into such a muddle. So if you want to order the advent calendar, just order the advent calendar. If you want to make sure that you get uh, your free postage, um, then just order two advent calendars. How is that? Or three or four or five? I'm sure you've got a few friends who would love to have a, a needle felted advent calendar. And, uh, and then if you, um, obviously, if you want anything else from us, just place a second order. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Otherwise, we will contact you and have to um, sort of say, can we um, put this through as a separate order and you will have to pay postage for it. But that's only because we just cannot um, facilitate that anymore. We'd love to do it, but we just physically can't do it without going absolutely mad. And then nobody will get their order if we're all as bonkers as we, even more bonkers than we are already. So that's one thing that I wanted to share. We have also now opened the booking. So people have now signed up for our Summer Weekend Away Go Wild with the Makers on the 13th to the 15th of August, which is in the Forest of Dean. And it will be um, an, mostly an outdoors event. I mean, obviously, we will go with whatever restrictions are in place, but we are geared for the worst case scenario. So it's um, 32 acres of woodland meadows, undercover, um, and a, a wonderful space for you to, um, well, enjoy fun food, fluff, friends, fleece and fresh air so many f's there so do uh, get in touch with us if you are interested it's info at the makers.co.uk message us get on our list we have got a few spaces left um i don't think we will have more than 30 people on the event and we're creeping up slowly to the over 20 mark so we do have spaces left um the price is £380 for a single occupancy tent or room. There are some proper rooms like with a roof, you know, remember those things when you used to go um, into um, a proper room rather than being outdoors, everything outdoors, sitting outdoors. Uh, we do have those available as well, but they are few in numbers because um, they are big rooms. They usually sleep eight people and we're offering them a single occupancy. So um, you, um, there are very, very few left. And... Um, Yes, but I anytime I'd sleep in a tent, if anybody asks me, do you want to sleep in a tent or in a room? As long as it's in the summer, I don't want to sleep in a tent in the midwinter, but um, I'd be very happy to do that. So we are planning on, um, I'm, I'm organizing some raw fleeces at the moment, quite special ones, some of them, and we will have an expert with us who will show you how to prepare raw fleece, how to wash it, how to um, dye it with indigo dyes, which is very special. And uh, we will do some wet felting, but we will also do some needle felting. All of this is included in the price, plus you've fully catered all the food, any activities you literally don't need to spend any other, other any other money however we will have a pop-up shop and you will get um special offers um during that weekend as well so you can definitely fill your boots and um bags and whatever else with um our wool and um whatever else you want and um it's just going to be really fun and emma will be there hopefully sophie will pop her head in but having a little one now she won't be able to commit to the whole weekend but i'm sure she will make an appearance one way or another so if you've never met us face to face you will find out we're really as nice as as you think we are maybe even nicer so do get in touch, info at themakers.co.uk and be um, rest assured we will look after you. 
Oh yes, I also should say, this is what I should have said with the advent calendars. If you had received our advent calendars from the previous year, would you just do us a favor, pop onto our website and leave a review whilst the advent calendars are live there now. Um, so yeah, tell us that you love the advent calendars from last year. We won't, you won't be disappointed this year either. Trust me, it's all good stuff in there. Um, and then just to get um, a few other bits out of the way. So we are but talking about butterflies. We are still doing the butterfly, the large blue butterfly for the butterfly conservation um, charity. And that is on the 10th. No, it's not. That's on the 27th. 27th. Oh, my God. Oh, hang on. Let's look on here. 28th. 28th of July at 7 p.m. is the workshop um, via Zoom. You have to buy everything from the butterfly conservation themselves. So pop onto their um, website or find them on social media. We've tucked them loads of times and you can get your butterfly um, workshop pack, very similar to the peacock one. So if you want a, a little collection, then this is a perfect um, a perfect opportunity. They're, as you can see, they're very similar size. And um, of course, the small tortoise shell small um, tortoiseshell butterfly is still available to buy in um, as a as a workshop pack as well from us directly and you get the box frame with it too and then um, I, I save some stuff for for the very end but there is something else that I, I need to say and that is if you if you don't know yet but really urgent this is urgent actually and for Thursday I'm sorry this is not live anymore for you but tomorrow evening at 7 p.m which is Wednesday the um, 30th of June I will be live over on Facebook on the creative craft show page this is Facebook oh I've got a sneeze in my nose no it's not coming out um and um and you can make um with me some of these beautiful curled domed seashells I, I show you how to make these I show you how to make them colorful and um, of course they go perfectly with um, the um, seascape picture that um, um, we are doing for the creative craft show on the 10th of July that's where the 10th of July came from and that is um, that's that workshop pack you can buy directly from the creative craft shows if you pop onto the website shop Dot. So it's www.shop.creativecraftshow.co.uk. You will find your Seascape needle felting um, kit ready to purchase there. It comes with everything to make an A5 um, Seascape picture. And of course, I will be doing this and that's live on Facebook. But as a teaser tomorrow, just tune in at 7 p.m. If nothing else, just come there to support us. And um, and you, I show you how to make these curly whirly um, shells. Really nice. There you go. Um, and that's all I'm going to bombard you with right now. I'm going to move over and um, get this butterfly done. So the next thing we need to do is as a final decoration on the on the on the wings is we need to add the white spots onto it. Now I'm counting five on each side. If you're gonna put six or four there, it's absolutely fine too. And you're starting at the top and you're just felting the spots down. It they look much bigger when you start out, but you can make them a lot smaller, obviously, by just keep stabbing into them. If you're using not enough wool, so if you use too tiny amounts of wool, then you will all you do is you just literally stuff the wool straight through the paper and it comes out the other side. So do make sure you've got enough to get exactly the balance right so that you can actually add them onto it rather than pushing them through it. But equally, don't get too much of the wool so that you've got a great big white blob there. Um, so work your way along the top of the wing. Stab, stabbing that in. Um, I don't know if you notice it, but when I when I try and get the wool to go in, I sort of twizzle it around the tip of my needle like you would wind up spaghetti on your fork. And that helps it to stab the fibers in so that it makes a neat spot rather than having, um, and, and in this on this occasion, they are neat spots. And get them pushed in there like that. So you, so the more that you stab them, the more, um, the smaller they will become lift it off your uh, mat regularly they could actually be a tad smaller if I was honest but um, you can see them better if I make them larger so if you do them at home just maybe aim for half the size 
There we are. And then, of course, as always, you've got to do this on the other side. Um, and because they're bigger, I've actually gone further down the wing. But again, it's not um, the end of the world if you um, if you do exactly what I'm doing. Everybody will see this as a peacock butterfly, even if there are some small imperfections in there. And then let's face it, even if you look at butterflies, different ones, they always look slightly different. And sometimes they've got a, a bit of a wing that looks less shiny and bright than um, others, just like us people. We're, we're, none of us are perfect. We all have small imperfections. So your needle felted butterfly can have those too. So stop these little spots on. And then the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make the, um, the body, which um, requires, um, you need to use your needle and you need the brown wool. And we're making a 3D shape really really easy a very good um it's a really easy and simple technique and you can use it for other things as well um and i'll tell you what that might be handy for as well right so i've got my white spots in here now as well they're all felted down i'm just gonna go over this with my super fast five needle felting tool making sure it's all felted down nice and neatly I, I really love what what um, these butterflies look like from the other side as well. It it if if yours looks like the one that I'm going to show you in a minute, it just means you felted it really really well. Look at this, isn't that amazing? All the colours working their way through on the other side as well, and it's so dense and so the water soil paper has been completely into this um has, has is completely integrated in in this make here now. Right, so I'm going to put this to one side um, because in a minute we need to um, cut cut the water solid paper around this, but I'm following the instructions so that's not happening quite yet. Here's my brown wool. This is in fact all I've got left over and there's um, plenty there. Now this is um, a way of how you can make a 3D shape. We're using the felting needle. This is the coarse felting needle. You have to be careful that you don't touch the end here because it hurts if you do. Um, you can, of course, use other things like you could use a little wooden stick or a knitting needle or whatever. Um, the trick is that you um, hold the fibers here with, with what, whichever hand you're not using to wind the wool around. So make sure that you've got a, a grip here and then you're just put, uh, wrapping the wool around the needle and sort of pulling it tight as you've complete that wrap and now you know why I'm saying watch that end of the needle because it's easy to just catch it with your hand as you're going round and wind the whole wool around this at some point you can let go of those wispy ends because that sort of that it has tightened itself around itself make sure you don't pull it too tight at the tip of the needle because um, you might just break your needle and then um, oh, go around Okay, there we go. And um, when you get to the end of the um, of your wool, then just sort of get rid of it, assess it, and we could actually even put a little bit more on there. So start again where you um, where you started to start with. Um, by the way, we've got a, a winner as well, and we've got um, I think it's. I've forgotten now. I think it's either Megan Beth or Beth Megan, but I think it's Megan Beth um, S. So um, what you need to do now, and also whoever wins it on Thursday, drop us a line, info at the makers with two S's, remember that, um, and just let us know that you are the proud winner of our Needle Felted, um, Making Needle Felted Animals book um, after the live stream. Um, and um, we will post that out to you. We'll get to your details and post it out. Right, so what you've seen me do is I've built up um, the body shape a little bit more. I don't want it to be too fat. Um, and all you need to do now magically, because it's nice and firm, you just have to pull your needle out and you've got a ready, um, fairly solid shape here, actually. However, you can just give it a few stubs with your needle. What I tend to do is sort of stub into the sides rather than into the middle um, and just keep rolling it over and um, just assess how how solid it is or how fragile it is. So just be um, a little bit more, a bit delicate with it to start with. Um, but it looks, this one looks quite good. 
and then obviously what you need to do is you will have to fasten it onto your butterfly but before you fasten it onto your butterfly you're going to have to cut the um, water soluble paper off around your um, shape so I'm using these little white scissors we do sell these as well they're like embroidery scissors and they're really good to use for this sort of thing there's another opportunity to neaten up your shapes your shape even um, so go around if you have extra paper on the outside don't worry about it because that will just disappear but if you've got extra wool that you want to get rid of then this is the time to do it because we're not that that doesn't come back so cut around the butterfly to give it a really nice nice neat edge and once you've done that you can you can see this is this is sort of the edge of the butterfly that I've cut away so there are some wispy bits there but um um not too much so I've been quite precise there's the butterfly now all all finished but quite how can I say well you can see the water soil paper for starters so we need to get rid of that but first of all we're going to felt the body onto it so if your body of the butterfly looks anything like that then you've done well um, and uh, so so um, felt the Oh, I think I've actually done one step wrong. I think you're meant to cut the water soluble paper off afterwards, but it really doesn't matter. I'm, I'm. It is so hard to um do it step by step when when you're um a seasoned needle felter and you just you just do it naturally. But in any case, what you see me do now is that I'm stabbing into the body of the butterfly, but I'm stabbing into the very very edge of the brown body and stab that straight into the butterfly itself. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm keeping the body 3D and nice and narrow rather than stabbing straight into it which would make it fat and flat um, and um, we do want it to be nice and narrow so you can neaten up the ends of the butterfly here as well and then um, what you can do is because you can add the um, I think on in here I can't remember now what it says when it is dry you can bend the antenna in half and glue them on so because the antenna they're really really delicate they're in this water, in this uh, glassine bag. And um, you can glue them on or they're, they're so tiny. I don't even know if you can see them in the camera. These are really, really tiny, tiny, tiny little flower stamen. Um, I don't know. I've never tried this, but you might be able to insert them um, by making a hole at the end of, of the um, head. Oh, yes, it does work. So you could insert them already. And just sort of bend them up so you don't have to actually glue them. You could put a dab of glue there or just maybe stab, stab it shut. Okay, so this is, I'm diverting from the instructions now. If you don't want to glue them, you want your butterfly all ready as I, I want to have my butterfly ready. So it's got these tiny, tiny little um, antennae there, there now. Um, and then what you do is I will show you how to dissolve the water so paper sorry about my um, lid um, bowl solution here I've got to bring a bowl um, um, to the desk here and there's a bit of water now ideally you use warm water I've got cold water here it does work as well um, the, now this is really important what I'm going to tell you next so listen up Basically, if you want to completely rinse the water soluble paper out of this butterfly, you can. But you, what you will also do is not only do you get rid of the visible evidence of the water soluble paper, you also completely taken out the starch that um, that makes the, water, the the butterfly poseable, or at least you can put it in a certain pose while it's, it's drying. So if you want to do that, that's fine. But um, all I'm saying is if you then say, oh, my butterfly, I can't, it doesn't stay in that position. That is because you have literally washed out everything of the water soil paper when actually you just want to rinse it out a little bit so that the, the paper itself disappears. So you saw me dip it in the water. And as you are, as you can see, can you see here now, you can't see the water soil paper anymore, whereas you can still see it here. So just get rid of the visible evidence of the water soil paper. When you squeeze the water out of your butterfly, you should end up with st sticky fingers. That's exactly what you should have, because that shows that you still got the starch in there, which the 
the, 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 the fabric stiffener in a way, which is what the water soluble paper does as well. So not only do we use it to make a thin finish and you can make a precise shape, you will also use it um, on this occasion when you rinse it out, that the water soluble paper itself, the remains of it, becomes a fabric stiffener. And um, so just dip it into the water, squeeze it by squeezing the um, shape and squeezing the water out again. You can even squeeze it together like that. My fingers are sticky, definitely sticky. So that's good. I mean, it's not particularly something I enjoy, but it's good that they are sticky. Have a bit of, um, I've got a, I've got a tea towel here. So I'm just going to, if you've got um, a tea towel or if you've got some, um, kitchen towel. I'm just going to dry up, squeeze it so that a bit more water comes out of the butterfly. There. there it is. Freshly hatched or emerged or whatever the word is. And, um, and now all you need to do is if you want your butterfly, it looks nice from the back, doesn't it? If you want your butterfly to be slightly that shape, then you rest it on top of the back of a book or whatever. Sorry, I got my head in the way again there. Excuse me for that. I'm going to go on the other camera to show you now. So there's the butterfly. It is floppy and wet. I will give you that. But it won't stay like that. Once you put rest it on, on the back of a book, like I'm doing here now, and leave it to dry, completely solid dry, and then um, it will be exactly like this butterfly. It might be even a bit, the wings might be a bit more um, closed or open, whichever way you've rested it. And the wings are really, they're not fl floppy. So whereas this one here... If I hold it like that now, the wing droops, whereas this one is nice and stiff. But in any case, there they are, two butterflies. One still wet, one nice and dry, but um, yours will be just like that too. So remember to share it with us. Um, the, um, the site to share it is our Facebook page, ideally. You can also pop onto Instagram, give us a mention on Instagram. At, on Instagram, we're just... Um, at squiggly bit the makers and on every one a maker uh, we are move these flowers over we are at the makers.co.uk that's our um, facebook social media handle it looks like a web address but it's it's not it's at the makers.co.uk give us a tag or join everyone a maker um, on our facebook group where you can just um, share anything you like that you've made from our products ideas books um, or or anything else live streams whatever and um as a last thing um what do i need to tell you what else um oh yes the next um so the next live stream next week is the starfish which we've all been waiting for um and uh there there it is so you can get your um kit for that still you've got still got time to have it posted out it is um it's a kit that actually makes two, oh, sorry, wrong camera, apologies. It makes two, this um, kit, and I will show you how to make one next Tuesday. Um, in the theme of our sea side um, makes, and um, in, the, in that same vein, we've also got um, our next four lives, which are coming up the starfish, as I've just been telling you. Then we've got the narwhal on the 13th of um, July. We are making a clamshell on July the 20th, and then we have a two-part mermaid starting on July the 27th and going into, um, into August as well. So these are the uh, next, actually they're the next five weeks because the mermaid is a part tour. The mermaid you can buy as a pack for all of our for all of our um, free tutorials here on YouTube or when we restream them on Facebook. You get a list of ingredients that you might need to uh, craft along because we would love you to make your uh, make alongside. If you can keep up with my speed, you're doing really well. But remember, there is a pause button and the rewind button and you can watch it over and over again. So it's not as if, you, if you've missed it, then you've missed it forever. It will stay on our YouTube channel, which reminds me, give us the thumbs up, all of you who are watching right now. Tell your friends to subscribe. We need to get lots and lots more subscribers. And let's just have a last little check in what's going on. Um... Congratulations to today's winner, which is Beth, Beth Megan. I probably said it wrong, so I probably said Be Megan Beth S. Um, and um, she's really pleased. Yay! 
we always like fleeced people. Um, everybody's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, lovely, thank you. Um, and I think that's it. We're done. So remember, this is what we made today. It's a little bit heavy and wet still, but it is beautiful, a beautiful butterfly. And um, I don't know, did you believe this would happen? I'm always amazed at myself how, you know, a pile of wool, which I've still got some left there. That's what I've got left over of um, my first butterfly. Could probably make a second one. And um, I've got a whole load of um, wool left to make a second one, including the water soluble paper. So it's a really good value kit. Get your butterfly kit and you can watch it again. Tell your friends. Go on, do something nice today. Tell your friends that they can make a beautiful butterfly. That's all from me um, today. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I hope you like our new end screen, which you will see right now. <laughs>